I love Macau. There's a new bridge from Hong Kong. The same old history, great food, memorable sights, amazing buildings, mind-blowing hotels, and a whole lot of fun. Let's go. We're on the airport bus, enjoying the sights. Happy my daughter Rachel and my friends Gerard and Rebecca are with me for the day. Macau is a former Portuguese colony that is 34 miles to the west of Hong Kong. And believe it or not, we'll go to Macau on the newly opened Hong Kong Macau Zuhai Bridge. The cost? About $8 each way. Buses every five minutes. So we get the tickets at the boundary crossing and off we go. The bridge is a 34 mile, 55 kilometer bridge tunnel system. The bad news is that the bus windows are filthy dirty. No comment except to say in Hong Kong, the bus windows are always clean. The crossing involves long bridges and a tunnel that is 6.2 kilometers in length. But this is actually a place that in many ways bridges east and west. It's certainly an amazing bridge. After 35 minutes we arrive in Macau. Rachel is home from New York for a month. She did the last Macau video with me a few years ago and we're looking forward to more fun times. The trip over here was much quicker, cheaper and less hassle than the ferry ride we took in the past. Macau is a mixture of Portuguese and Chinese. The term for that is Macanese. First stop, Senado Square. We've just taken the minibus to Senado Square, which is right behind us, and we're going to grab something to eat. We particularly want to eat Portuguese food. It's actually more expensive in Senado Square, but we decided to do it anyway. A taste of Portugal seemed to be the right place. And so it was, though certainly on the expensive side. But a nice place, excellent service, and good food with Rebecca and Gerard. The waitresses were delightful. We found a really nice Portuguese style restaurant and we're gonna sit down and have some lunch. We've ordered steak and codfish and rice and we're all very hungry, so we're really looking forward to eating. This is the baked fish, certainly delicious in cream sauce with potatoes. Portuguese style rice with fried fish and steak with cream sauce. Bye bye. So afterwards we tried a Portuguese patty from Chaves, North Portugal, that was great. And then we went out to explore again. It's an amazing place certainly unique and by the year 2020 it will pass Qatar as the richest place in the world per capita. Its wealth comes from its casinos, its actual revenue is seven times that of Las Vegas but outside of the casinos is a wealth of wonders, history, architecture, cuisine 
and thousands of mainland China tourists. On an average day, there are 130,000 tourists here, and it's less than 12 square miles. Some unique buildings, most iconic being the ruins of St. Paul's Cathedral. This is fun already. Time for a coffee. Two good coffee shops have actually opened in Macau, but they're nowhere near here. So we get a Starbucks. Despite the overcast weather, we're having a really good time. It's very crowded though, but besides that, we're having a really good time. Behind me is the Ruinas de San Paulo, the ruins of St. Paul's Cathedral. Macau was a Portuguese trade port for over 400 years. A place of novels, pirates, and taipans. I came here for the first time 45 years ago, so I've actually watched it grow over the years. Yet there are places that never change. Not just the ruins of St. Paul's, but even restaurants I visited on my first trip here are still here. St. Paul's Cathedral and the Mount Fort are still the main tourist destinations. A beautiful statue of Matteo Ricci, an Italian who was the first Catholic missionary to China arriving in 1582. We are walking up to the Mount Fort. As Macau grew, it needed to be defended. Six forts and seven defensive walls were built here. This fort by the Jesuits. Many of the walls at that time were built of clay, sand, rice straw, rocks, and oyster shells. Quite a combination. It's very well preserved, surrounded by lawns and flowers. Why was it built, you might wonder? When the Portuguese conquered Macau, it was the first European colony in East Asia, but the Dutch wanted it. They tried several times, but were repelled every time. And as a result of these incursions, the Portuguese, as you can see, strengthened the defenses. There's an excellent museum in the fort and beautiful gardens too. And water lilies. The original walls are still intact. Good fun. Yeah, we just had to climb a whole bunch of stairs and we're up at some fort. I don't know the name of. <laughs> Rachel has been Americanized in New York, where they only use two collective nouns, bunch and ton. So it's a bunch of steps and a ton of people here. What's up, everybody? Next, we have a leisurely stroll around Mount Fort, enjoying the views and the history the old and the new. As the rest of Macau awaits us, we head back down to the town.
after the stroll a snack. We're eating a Portuguese egg tart. Yeah. And it's actually really yummy. I mean, of course it would be. Then we find the Turkish ice cream men. The ice cream is great. The antics of the vendor certainly entertaining. His name is Gene, so be sure to say hi, Gene. Very nice guy. Is it good? Very good. It was worth all the tricks. So we walk back to the town. This is the original Big Apple. We will take the free shuttle bus from near the Grand Emperor Hotel to the city of dreams, located on Kotai, which is a stretch of land reclaimed from the sea between the islands of Koloan and Taipa, hence Kotai, that has become prime real estate here and is now home to high-rise hotels and casinos. The Venetian being the biggest and most prestigious. We're now on our way to go and see the Venetian Hotel. And is actually at 10.5 million square feet, the biggest hotel in the world. An Eiffel Tower replica is nearby. A copy of the Venetian Campanile and Venetian columns outside. And believe it or not, a replica of the Doge's Palace in Venice in front. And canals around the outside, making the hotel itself a tourist attraction. And there's more inside. As soon as we enter, we're confronted by what appears to be a replica of the library in Fontainebleau Palace in France. It's certainly magnificent. But we are heading for another amazing sight as we make our way to the third floor lobby, a replica of the canals of Venice that goes all the way around. Not only that, but it's complete with singing gondoliers. The ride is about $12 a head. There are plenty of places to eat here, 
All kinds of cuisine, all kinds of prices too, and even a food court. So we decided it was time for dinner, and after careful deliberation, I decided on a Malaysian laksa, one of my favorite noodle dishes, coconut milk, prawns, spices, garlic, bean curd, and Singapore vermicelli, stir-fried rice noodles. Vermicelli, by the way, is Italian for small worms. Rachel had the chicken hot plate with curry and rice. And then it was time to return to Hong Kong. We took the shuttle to the port. Then the 35 minute bus ride to Hong Kong. Another fun time in Asia. If you enjoyed traveling with us, let me know in the comments.